Hey everyone, it's Erin from the Painted Tin Bin. So, all your paint kits are behind me, so I'm doing all of the videos tonight. But, this video is for Pip the Penguin. He's so cute. I love him. I love him. Um, whether you have the 12 inch shape or whether you have the magnet shape, you need to follow this video if you want. You don't have to. Um, so I'm going to go through the contents of your kit, your paint kit, talk about maybe some things you might want to grab from around the house to help you with this. And uh, we'll get started. Okay. So within your paint kit, you had some sponge brushes. You had one or two uh, detail brushes. And then you had... Uh, the, the wire hanger, you will need that. So dig around in the bottom of the bag for that if you had if you have a 12 inch hanger. And then you had the following colors. You had the world's most bestest color combo, pink and teal. You have orange and white, and then you have black. Um, so we are going to make the world's most adorable Pip the Penguin. So a couple things you may want to go grab from around the house, either a paper plate or maybe some tin foil that you can just kind of lay down and pour your paint onto. You will not need the whole bottle, so don't pour the whole bottle on it. Um, but just because yours comes in bottles, mine are obviously already in little cups here in the workshop. Uh, grab a hair dryer maybe. Uh, if you have a hair dryer that has a cool setting. If you don't have a hair dryer, you don't have a hair dryer that has a cool setting. Don't worry. You're just going to have, it's going to take you a little longer because we always do two thin coats of paint um, for our colors. So doing that then, um, you know, just speeds it up. That's all. And we'll go th through that. So, um, and then something, so we're uh, old clothes. This is Sherwin-Williams exterior latex paint. So uh, if you get it on your clothes, it's there forever and ever, amen. But also, then also something to protect your work surface. So I just have some old brown butcher paper um, here in the workshop. But um, you could get like a Walmart bag. You could go grab the Amazon box that came to your house today, <laughs> break it down, and uh, you can use that to protect your, your creative space as well. So, okay. All right. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to do things kind of slightly out of order. I know you're shocked by that. Um, I'm going to do a white belly first. So all the shapes come to you stenciled and primed, um, but it's just primer. So you will probably want to add a little more white to the belly uh, and the face if you so choose. And um, I think that's going to be the best place to start. So what I'm going to do is you're just going to load up some paint, not a lot of paint. Okay. We're going to keep in our coats thin and just go and create. I like to go left to right on my first coat and then top to bottom on my second coat. Don't ask me why there's no science behind it. Um, other than when you go the opposite direction on the other coat, it does help, um, with coverage because you get all the spots that going the other direction didn't fill so so we dove right in sorry about that but uh, welcome those of you that are watching this on the YouTubes and thank you for helping raise funds for uh, Springfield 186 United Way Drive I think that's a pretty common uh, or no, I don't want to say common. Uh, I think you guys do that fundraiser every year, the United Way fundraiser. So, um, my experiences with 186, I believe that is something you guys strive for because it helps a lot of kids in your district. So, always kudos to that. So, I'm gonna always make sure thin coats and and keeping it not as streaky as possible. Sometimes that is gonna be hard, but that's okay. Um, so I'll show you. So there you go. See, white belly, way better. Um, if you don't like that there's so much white, maybe you want a smaller white belly, you can absolutely do that. Any stenciling that is done in this shape, you can choose to ignore it. Totally fine. 
Um, and then I'm also going to do, I believe the penguin's face is white too. And we do have a beak on the penguin's face up here, but, oh no, is it black or is it white? I don't know. We're going to figure that out. Uh, <laughs> we, um, so again, going back to my note of if you don't like the beak, if you want a smaller beak, if you want a bigger beak, you don't want a beak at all, uh, you can do your own rhinoplasty. That's totally fine. Um, and you can do that. So sorry, I'm pulling up. I had a moment there where I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. What? Um, winter shape. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know what? I forgot the... I forgot the uh, stencil up top. That's my fault. I'm gonna have to do that. So, uh, Pip the Penguin does have, he gets a white face, but then he also does have the gray, the gray black, almost black is what I called it, um, up there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go all the way across. And there you go, you can kind of see. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, so while that white is drying, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna move down to the ice skates, okay? And uh, that's gonna require a couple things. You definitely will need either a piece of tin foil or a paper plate so that you can make gray, okay? But first thing we're gonna do, we have to decide what color our skates are gonna be, uh, the most important decision ever. And I think I'm gonna go with teal, okay? So I'm gonna get just a little bit of teal. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna be, it's gonna be upside down. This top part, okay? So we have the blade, we have the middle of the blade, and then this is the shoe part. So go ahead and paint that uh, whatever color you so choose. Which brings up a good point. Um, if you wanted to add other colors to your cuteness, metal cuteness, please, uh, you are more than welcome to. We use exterior latex paint. However, if you have some acrylics, some craft paint hanging around your house and you want to add a little zhuzh to Sir Pip or Miss Pip, however you would so choose, um, you can. I would, I just can't guarantee it'll last as long as the exterior latex paint, but I do believe that the late or the acrylics will last at least a good couple years. Okay. So I, I don't want to deter you from using those. If you wanted to add a little extra zhuzh to your Pip the Penguin. So, all right, I'm on the second shoe here. And again, super easy, keeping it super simple. Um, I just fill it in with the paint using a small amount of paint. It's okay if your paint is a little streaky on the first um, coat. We're going to do a second coat. And so it'll catch the, uh, it'll catch the streakiness. So there you go. See, that's what we got so far. So if we've got a teal shoes we have to have a teal hat so um there's a couple things that compose the hat we have a brim we have the actual hat and then we have the pom-pom the most fun part i think i'm going to make um the whole hat teal but i'll show you what i'm going to do with the pink i'm going to have a pink pom-pom okay um, the other thing that you want to keep in mind when you're doing this is just do a quick swipe over on the sides of your um, of your metal. It will cover up that white primer edge that you see, but also um, just give you a nice finished look. So, and then if you're going right up against the white, which may or may not still be wet, I just loaded up the tip of my paint. And I just did, went straight across, okay? And then I just kind of fill it in. I will come back and re-add. That makes, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but I will add back in the brim of the hat um, with my detail work, but I just kind of wanted to get the hat. Look at how cute he is. So cute. 
okay? So while we have a couple different areas of paint drying, um, let's have a conversation about the hair dryer, shall we? So you do not have to have a hair dryer to make this go uh, faster. But that's all it does is it makes it go faster. So um, it has to have a cool setting. My my lovely hair dryer from Dollar General here in the workshop. I'm, I just have to hold the button in. It's really important that it remains cool air because if you use hot air that will heat up the metal, then the metal will expand, then the paint can adhere to the metal, and then the paint will bubble up and then it'll fall off. Nobody wants to start all over again. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this hair dryer. I'm gonna show you a couple things while I'm drying, and then I'll talk a little bit about them. Um, but I will wave at you when I'm done with the hair dryer in case you wanna put me on mute because hair dryer on video is kinda of like nails on chalkboard. Okay? All right, I'll be right back. forgot my penguin almost black I need to go get that my apologies so one second please Another color that you do have is the penguin almost black, okay? It looks a little gray. When our paint dries, it does dry a little darker. Um, so, and then I need to put in The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my pink and I'm going to do a pink scarf. So again, um, the how you do it, the way you do it, things like that, you can um, do it any way you want. You are more than welcome to copy how I do mine. Um, but the other thing to keep in mind is that Go on Pinterest and and do some, just type in either, either penguin door hanger. The other thing that this is a similar, it's like a snowman, you know, so this is a similar shape to a snowman with the hat and, and the scarf. So maybe um, type in snowman door hanger and you can create... Uh, you can get some ideas of design ideas for, you know, what whatever you want your your penguin to look like. That's a lot of times what I do if I don't, if I'm not having like a stroke of genius and in, in how I want to create a shape. I'll go to Pinterest and I'll just type in, uh, you know, what the shape is and do, um, and just kind of see and then combine a couple ideas. Like, well, I like the polka dots from this shape, but I like the color combo from this version and... You know, so it just kind of works out. So, and as you can see, I move my shape around when I'm painting. I encourage you to do that. It's It does not have to be static. It does not have to be stuck to your table. Um, but it uh, just helps, you know, as you're creating and getting things squared away. So... And again, do just a quick swipe. You don't need to add paint to your brush when you're doing the edges, um, but just a quick little swipe. 
So there you go, see? Already coming into play here. I'm also gonna do my little pom-pom on the top of his hat. Don't need a ton um, of paint here. So just gonna... All right. So see, here we are. All right. So, um, if your face is done, like the white is dry and things of that nature, let's, um, let's go ahead and do the beak. I'm going to walk you through that. I'm going to keep the beak. You are more than welcome to do any rhinoplasty you so choose. But all you're going to do is you're going to grab your skinny brush and you're just going to go and fill in what, uh, either what triangle shape beak shape i drew in for you or um whatever shape you so choose i had a student once who was really into penguins and um, he got very upset when a penguin picture that i gave him did not have the air holes the the nostril holes i guess so very important. <laughs> so we all have those, those students that we will never, ever, ever forget. So, okay. So, um, I did, you can see upside down. I did one coat. It's not perfect. It's a little streaky. That's okay. Um, we're, we're going to do a second coat. Okay. The other thing that I want to talk to you about is all of the brushes that you have. You have plenty of brushes here, but all of the brushes, whether it's your skinny brush or whether it's your, um, any of your foam brushes, they can be washed out and, and used again and again, washed and dried. I would suggest cold water for sure. Um, and then you could use them a couple of times. All right. So let's talk about, um, the skates, the actual like metal of the skates. So what you're going to need to do to get gray is one of the following. Grab your black, your actual black, or your almost black, um, and your white. So you either need to choose, do you want it to be the almost black or the black? I'm going to go for black. And you just need to create a gray that you are in love with. I'm going to just put a little bit of black in this little thing. You don't need a whole lot. Oops. Um, and then I'm going to put some white. And then I'm going to mix it up. And I'm going to use um, the end of my brush to mix up my paint. So that's why I was saying you probably want like a paper, paper plate or... Um, a piece of tin foil. So yeah, see, so this is like a great gray color. That's just my black and my white. It's about 50-50. Um, and uh, that'll be great for the skates. You may also want to grab some paper towels. Just always kind of helps. So I'm going to go in with this gray that I created and I'm going to go and do the skates. So um, you can make your skates a, a very solid gray if you so choose um i'm gonna be a little more on the kind of rustic side because if you think about it it's gonna give the shape the metal um for the skate a little dimension if i just kind of spread the paint around and around and around and i'll show you here in a second so so see kind of streaky. So that's what I'm going to kind of do. You are more than welcome to make your skates a solid gray. Again, this is what you ever, however you want to create the your piece. Um, the other thing you could do is you could just grab your black and grab your white and you could add some, um, dimension to, to the metal, um, skate part. I don't know what that is. I'm sure somebody knows what that is. Is that called like the, the blade? Maybe? I don't know. Um, if you wanted to add some a dimension, you know, that way to add some black, some white, and just kind of keep moving it around. It's really kind of your call. So as you can see, this is like the super easy fast part because I'm just back and forth, back and forth. Just gives it, 
gives it a little character, don't you think? So, all right. Um, I'm trying to think here. My pink is still drying. So what I am gonna do now is um, I'm going to finish out my hat. I'm going to do my second coat um, on my hat, second coat on my skates. So um, if you don't need a second coat, you don't have to do a second coat by any means. You are more than welcome to just have it at the one, depending on um, what kind of aesthetic or what design look you want. So, um, so yeah. There's a lot of things that you can do with your shape and it just, it always, I'm always excited when I'm teaching a class when, um, you know, 25 people come in for a class, they all have the same shape or the same two shapes. They all have the same supplies and colors and things like that. And um, it, inevitably at the end of the night, 25 different pieces walk out. It, it's just the most amazing thing to me. I love it. Um, people's creativity is awesome. So, um, so I hope this cute little 12 inch Pip the Penguin isn't intimidating at all. All right, so I got my two coats of teal. I got one coat of pink and I got my skates done. The next thing I need to do is is my my body gray of my, um, my not snowman, <laughs> my, uh, um, Pip the Penguin, but I think what I am going to do, probably going to do uh, one more hair dryer uh, time. So here we go. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my almost black, um, which kind of looks a little gray-ish when you hold it next to the black. And that's what I'm going to use for the body of the penguin. So I'm just going to go in and go around. Basically, it's like the outside of its body. So, but... Um, this is where you would um, go right on that pencil line of his body to cover that up. But know that if there are pencil lines showing at the end, there are ways we can hide that. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, the other thing that's kind of popular this time of year and into the winter is glitter. So I do have a glitter video on this YouTube channel where I talk about all the different options um, from a, the paint to the spray glitter to, you know, to um, Mod Podge and loose glitter. So um, I encourage you to go check that out. If you would like glitter and you don't have access to glitter or you don't want glitter in your home, <laughs> um, Give give us an email, the painted tin bin. So the painted P A I N T E D tin bin T I N B I N uh, at gmail.com. and just give us a, a quick email and say, hey, I'd like to come in and do some glitter on my Pip the Penguin. When can I come in? And you can absolutely come in um, during a workshop time, which is usually Thursday evening, Friday evening, Saturday, and Sunday. And you could use our glitter. We totally understand that. Um, so that's always available to you as well. But you notice that I'm just kind of putting a little bit of paint on the edge of my on, on the edge of my brush, and then I'm just using it and tracing along this, you know, the the outside of the body. So um, it goes pretty quick. These 12 inch shapes. It's a great shape for individuals who have never painted with us before. So typically our shapes are about, our door hanger shapes are about 24 inches, either in diameter or 
well, yeah, yeah, in diameter. So we do have 36 ones, but those are typically reserved for like decorating purposes, like putting them on fences and things like that. But, um, so yeah, the little 12 inch guys, they're super cute. They work well on, on, on classroom doors, on regular doors. Um, I have it in my cubicle at the office. I have one for every season. So, um, and they're great for kids too. So usually kids, um, this shape might be a little intense for some kids. Um, so unless they're really creative and they like to do these kind of things, then maybe this is right up their alley. But sometimes the, um, the 12 inch shapes are perfect for kids. Um, certain shapes, you know, so that they can come and create. And I always enjoy those classes as well on birthday parties. That's always a fun one too. When they have a cute little birthday party. I had a bunch of junior high girls come in and make flowers, I think, or hearts or something. And they were very creative. I was very proud of them. So there, you can see the bottom part is done. Again, not perfect. We're going to do a second coat um, of the almost gray. However, for the part around the face, I'm going to switch back to my skinny brush just so I have a little more control. Um, and plus since it's up by the face and I just wanted to make sure it's like on point. So same thing, just with a skinny brush, it'll take you a little longer, but you, you have the opportunity to probably, um, have a little more control over it. So, and again, the same thing, it goes here. If you would like a little more or a little less of the gray or the white um, for the penguin face, you are more than welcome to adjust at will. And I'll show you what I did. I did do it a little adjustment. I lowered his hairline, if you will. Um, but finish them out real quick and I'll show you what I did. So one thing that the one thing I did do up here, just cause I did want a little bit of the gray to show on the bottom of the hat is I just drew a, one, a straight line right underneath that hat and then connected it with the arch of the face. That's all I did. Okay. So really easy on that all right while we're waiting for the almost black to dry um let's go ahead and do the eyes for the said penguin so i want you to grab your wood handled sponge brush and um grab your black and what you're going to do is you're going to use this as a dot so someone already used this as an orange dotter this is how we make polka dots so you're going to put the world's smallest amount of black on the end of your paint brush handle. Um, but make sure it covers the whole circle. And then you're just going to put a dot on either side. Oops, there we go. Um, of the beak. Sorry, I got a lot of wet parts here, so I got to be careful where I pick up. So there you go. That's all I did. So you, if you don't want that big of eyes, you could easily use um, your skinny brush, the end of it as well, okay? Um, you could also draw it in with your paint. The other thing is, is if you have a Sharpie marker hanging around, go grab it. You could use your Sharpie marker to create your eyeballs as well, as well as add any detail that you may want. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean off my detail brush. I'm going to get, now we're getting in the fun part. Now we get to design things. Um, you are more than welcome to just keep it solid and, and, and be done. That's, that's absolutely a possibility. Um, on the snowman video, we did, uh, I taught everyone how to do snowflakes. So what you do is you, oops, 
Well, that's what happens when you have black on white. Um, you pull off on one of the wood handled brushes, you pull off the foam and then you're left with this like flat thing. And then you use that to make an X and a plus sign right on top of each other. So then you have like an asterisk and then you can put a blue uh, uh, polka dots around it and it looks like a snowflake. So, um, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add some detail to the hat and it's really very simple. I just did a quick swipe across the hat with my skinny brush and then did some ribs, ribbing like it was a sweater. That's it, that's all I'm gonna do. Um, Trying to think here what I'm gonna do for, I really just like that pink. I think I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do just a solid, I'm gonna just do a solid, solid scarf. I'm gonna live the dream with that. Keeping this, keeping this pip kind of cute. You could absolutely do some turquoise. Well, maybe I'll do some turquoise. See, I, I start talking and giving you options and I was like, well, maybe I'll do turquoise polka dots. Um, I'm gonna do just a quick light second coat just so that the streakiness kind of goes away. That's the other thing with your second coat. Like if your second coat, if your first coat is pretty solid, but um, you have just maybe a few spots where it needs to uh, have a second coat, you absolutely can just do that part um, with just a nice thin coat of paint. And I apologize, I spilled some black on my white belly. So I waited for the black to dry and then I painted over it with white. All right, so we're gonna dry it real quick. I'll wave at you when we're back. So I don't know if I talked about this earlier, but um, when you're using the hair dryer, you kind of saw me kind of touching things, make sure that they were dry. And if it doesn't come off on your hands, um, then it will, oops, sorry about that. I had to decline a call there. Um, it will, it, it won't come off on your hands. The other thing you kind of saw me doing was kind of doing one of these things in the light, like kind of flashing it back and forth. So the paint when it's wet is shiny, um, and, but when it dries, it is not, it is matte or not as shiny. So that was, that's another way for you to tell if a section is wet or dry, a section of paint. So um, I'm gonna go in, I'm just gonna do some quick spot additions to my gray that I need to touch up on. Again, the gray parts would also be a really good part 
to just do a quick swipe um, along the side of your shape just so that you don't see any primer. And then I will do the face, the second coat of the face. This Pip guy, he's my he's my winter favorite. I love him. He's just so cute. So, and ladies and gentlemen, I would say we are done. See how easy that was? Um, you don't have to do anything super fancy to Pip. He's just super cute as as is he or she. Um, and so now I'm going to talk to you about how to do your hanger, okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to put your pip over the side of your ed, uh, edge of your table so that the hanger hole is hanging off the table, okay? So I want you to grab your wire and I want you, okay, I'm, I'm gonna show my nerdiness. I want you to make a parabola. <laughs> Uh, or, or a U shape, ladies and gentlemen, uh, with your wire. And what I want you to do is I want you to put the ends together. Okay, so we're gonna put them together. I want both pant legs. So these are like two pant legs. I want both pant legs to go through the hole. Okay, and then this is where you either need a pair of um, needle nose pliers, if you so choose, or um, I've also used a Bic pen that has the little cap with the little shirt catcher thing on it. Um, and all you're going to do is you're just going to put the wire between the pen and the pen cap clip and twist. Or if you have a pair of needle nose pliers, you're just going to keep twisting. Okay. And then you just flatten it out. And you just keep twisting and then you lather, rinse and repeat for your other side. It's kind of going a little sideways. Um, but the great thing about it is, is it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be as fun as you want it to be. Okay. And then there you go. There is Pip the Penguin. Thank you for creating with me tonight and hope to see you guys soon. Thanks.